One month ago, I submitted my university final year project. This, an adaptive chess AI. It's really neat, but it requires you to have a PC or a laptop to play it. Unlike traditional chess, where you can just take out a board and, well, play. So I decided to spend the next week converting this virtual chess AI into an actual physical board in real life that you can play against. This was one of the harder projects that I've ever actually worked on, and let's just say many things went wrong. Oh, for fuck's sake. So subscribe and enjoy. The first step was figuring how the heck I'm going to convert this digital game into a physical product. Luckily, smart chess boards already exist. And from doing some research, I found two main methods of making them work. The first being this X and Y axis with pulleys and magnets. Basically, magnets are inserted into the underside of pieces and moved on the board. This was a pretty awesome but expensive and generally more time consuming method, so I opted against it. The other solution was using LEDs to light up the underside of the board, and have the lights individually change colours to determine where pieces should be moved. This was less expensive and takes hopefully less time, so I went with this option. First up, I need to make a chassis for the chessboard. Basically, the thing that will hold the electronics and be the actual chessboard. Originally, I was going to use something like wood. It's cheap, looks nice and easy to get. But I realised that I would have to make some precise cuts in it for the electronics. And well, that's kind of hard. My second option was using Lego. That way I can build any divots or holes into it. But again, when it comes to super precise measurements, it will be really hard. So I did the next best thing. I got a 3D printer. For the record, I didn't just get it for this project, but I kind of did. Anyways, the chassis. I was pretty in luck because I found this DIY chessboard by Lewis. And although I won't be able to use pretty much anything here, because it's out of date and not what I want, he did kindly provide his 3D files for a chessboard, with divots created for LEDs, buttons, etc. So I ended up using his design in the print. For the filaments, I chose this PLA wood from Bamboo Lab. It's nice and has a nice texture. Yeah, that's about it. And well, it was time to print. After the print was finished, I used some Gorilla Glue and glued the pieces together. I also ended up using some makeshift clamps and it worked surprisingly well. By the way, the 3D printed parts were altered by me to fit the needs of my project, so if you are wanting to follow along and do a similar thing, keep that in mind. Hey, before we continue, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I always want to try and improve my skills, and I've been trying to get better at DIY through Skillshare. If you haven't heard, Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes in countless categories ranging from beginner to advanced. Categories include illustration, design, animation, film, photography, and more. On Skillshare, you are taught by industry experts who all adopt a learn-by-doing approach, where members can share a project after completing a class. The platform is on demand with stackable lessons so you can learn at your own pace and skill level. Personally, I have been following this build-your-own-remote-controlled airplane class, and it's been a lot of fun. I haven't completed it just yet, but it's going really well. So if you want to learn a new skill or improve on ones you already know, then check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. Now let's continue. Okay, so with the chassis complete, it's time to add the LEDs. Basically, I will need an 8x8 matrix of LEDs so that each tile on the chessboard has its own corresponding light. I went with these WS2812B lights. Basically, it means that each light is individually addressable, so I can have each one be a different colour. This is a 30 LEDs per metre roll, but actually I also got this 60 LEDs per metre roll, because originally I wanted to have two LEDs per tile, but I realised that will need more power, and therefore a little more work managing that so I opted for this one instead. Before placing the LEDs into the chassis, I had to remove this gel casing off it. This was so that I could get access to the connections. Then I was able to solder a bit of wire onto the ends of each LED strip. Okay, this is actually perfect 
soda. I did actually a fucking phenomenal job of that. This was also before I had the genius idea of wearing a mask. Please make sure you wear a mask and keep your room ventilated when soldering. After doing this 6 times per strip, so 48 times, I then had to solder 3 additional wires to those solder points. These were the 5 volt wire, ground and data. This ended up taking another hour or maybe more because I needed to precisely cut each wire, add some flux to it, then place a bit of solder wire on it so it adheres better, and only then solder it to the LED strip. 48 times. And in the process of doing that, I ended up burning my finger. Only once to be fair, but it still kinda hurt. Okay, so this is actually a good point to test if this works. But before we do that, let me tell you how I'm going to be controlling these LED lights. I will be using this, an Arduino Nano. The idea is that the LEDs will be connected to this little device, from which I can run a script to control them. So I got the LEDs connected to the Nano by basically placing all the 5 volt connectors into this little block, and then all the ground ones to another one. Now let's just connect it to my PC and try to get them to light up. Hey, so I've been trying to get the LEDs to turn on for about 30 minutes now, but it just doesn't seem to be working. No matter if I try to light up all of them, or if it's just one, using lower brightnesses, it just doesn't want to work. Now, I have three potential reasons as to why that might not be happening, all kind of ranging in severity of if that is the case. The first reason is these blocks here. I basically got these blocks because I was hoping to connect all the 5 volt connectors together from the LEDs and the Arduino, and all the ground ones. Now, it could be that these just aren't gripping the wires correctly and they're just not being connected, and that's why I basically can't control the LEDs from the Arduino. The second problem could actually be the LED lights themselves. They might just not work or be fried. Um, if that's the case, then I just need to buy some new LEDs and redo the entire thing I've just done over again. The final thing is that this little fella, the Arduino Nano, just doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through, try and troubleshoot these issues and um, come back to you with a, potentially a solution. I don't know, uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so I ran a small scale test by creating this monstrosity. Okay, so I've gone ahead and now connected this uh, monstrosity again to the Arduino. Um, and basically, this is my current test. If I run it, let's say at 20% brightness, press play to upload it, uh, hopefully this works. Yeah, there we go. The LED light lights up. You can't really see it because it's kind of bright but it works. And I should mention, the reason it didn't work was because of these stupid blocks. Yeah, fuck them. Um, I actually don't know where that went. And here we have the final thing connected to the Arduino. Let me just reset it. And there we go. You can see all the LEDs are nice and working. One more thing before moving on is I printed these semi-transparent sheets to basically lay at the top of the board. And that's what it looks like. For those interested, I use the transparent PETG from Bamboo Lab. So now that the LEDs are up and running, there is a few more electronic things we need to do. Of course, we still have the entire AI situation and the chess part, but don't worry, I will get to that. But another thing that is needed is a way to communicate with the AI. For example, when I make a move, it needs to know what move I made. I could go the fancy way of having sensors underneath each tile, but it's also extremely expensive to buy 64 different sensors, wire them, and then actually make it work. So instead of that entire headache, I'm going to be using buttons. Specifically the 6mm by 6mm by 6mm tactile buttons. They are like the most commonly used buttons since they're cheap, plus they're relatively easy to set up. First though, I needed to print the sheet that will hold the buttons. Okay guys, first print, bit of a disaster. I know it looks fine, but the issue is that the buttons are 6mm by 6mm by 6mm. And well, I've made these divots 5.98mm. So the buttons don't fit. I tried sanding it down a little bit and then they fit, so I'm gonna try reprinting it at a bigger size. Okay, so I reprinted it at a bigger size, but as you can see, there's something going on in the corner. Basically, I didn't dry my filament, so what ended up happening is a bubble formed, and when I popped it, that happened. So I'm gonna print it for the third time, third time, the 
the charm. Okay, so this is the third print. Um, I know it looks a little bit rough, and that's because I've already tried gluing the buttons to it. The issue is that the glue is just not adhering to this material. This is a PLA metal material, and even after sanding, the buttons just don't want to stick. So I'm going to reprint this for the fourth time now, this time using a different filament. Okay guys, so I finally got it right, and I was able to glue the buttons down. Then I needed to wire all the buttons. I have unfortunately no footage of this, but basically all the buttons share a common ground wire. And then each button has its own data wire, which will connect to the Arduino. After a little setback, oh, for fuck's sake, and a bit of a hurt finger, I was able to get the Arduino connected to my PC, and I can now press buttons and they register. So it was now time to move on to the Raspberry Pi, aka the Chess AI. Okay, so when it came to the Pi, it's actually very simple. I am using this Raspberry Pi 4B, and I connected it to the Arduino serial ports. Then inside the Arduino script, I make a connection to it, and on the Pi code, I do the same. Now they both can communicate, so I set my Pi up so it runs the Chess AI, and anytime I input a move into it, it will respond. Then once its response is received, the tiles will highlight on the board to indicate the AI's move. I did a bunch more tweaks to get it working, but all you need to know is that the Arduino controls the LEDs and the buttons, while the Raspberry Pi controls the actual Chess AI. Really quickly guys, I also implemented an OLED screen. It's only 0.96 inches, but it's super cool and displays messages from the Pi. For those interested, I'm using Pillow to get it working. So since this video is being kind of long at this point, here is everything else I needed to do. I needed to print the panels for the top of the chessboard to indicate the tile numbers and letters. I then went through printing little letter labels to distinguish the buttons, since only I knew what they meant without the labels. Then I needed to make some divots into the chassis of the board, because the ones I made previously didn't line up anymore. <laughs> and then I did a bunch of changes to the Pi code. Finally, here is the finished product. So that's it, the chessboard is finished. I ended up adding some more stylistic choices to it and changing some of the LED colors around in the end. But yeah. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe. I had a lot of fun with this idea and video, so I hope you, well, enjoyed it. Also, make sure to check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.